So <sighs> fluid dynamics. I'm looking at this picture. It's nature. Nature is fascinating. There's a lot of details happening in nature when water is flowing in the river. But it's, it's not only beautiful, it's like art, but it's not only art, it's, it's, it's also science. There is regional science behind what we are seeing over here. It's physics, and in particular, it's fluid dynamics, a subfield of physics, which tries to explain what we are seeing in this picture. And in my talk, I'm addressing if this is important to simulate liquid and gas flows. The name of this painting is Conversation. When the COVID pandemic was approaching Finland, I was having a conversation in a birthday party right in the beginning of 2020 and trying to convince a few, few people that it's, it's important to do fluid dynamics simulations, what, what these people could benefit out of, out of these simulations. So I tried to convince this, these people. Okay, there, there I went. Fluid dynamics is everywhere. There's so many phenomena in nature every day that we see that's related to fluid dynamics. For example, water fragmentation in a fountain. Without these phenomena, we wouldn't have spraying processes. And why do we need spraying processes? Spraying is needed in, for example, irrigation systems. In fact, I believe that we wouldn't have agriculture on the present scale of today without these physical phenomena, droplet formation. Or in the extreme, fluid dynamics. Fluid dynamics can take human to space. You need to understand in detail what is happening in a space rocket engine and be able to also model that by computer and experiments. We need experiments and simulation. And simulation is often chosen in our team because it's cheaper to make simula simulations and also uh, uh, somehow, somehow easier because you don't need laboratory uh, spaces for, for doing the simulations on a supercomputer. But anyhow, you can do wind tunnel measurements of aerodynamics of a car, which would be a typical application of fluid dynamics, or you can do a computer model of the same phenomenon to design more energy efficient vehicles. But it's not only about technology, it's also about health. And here on the, on the right, you see a picture, a CFD, computational fluid dynamics simulation, of, of blood flowing in an aneurysm. So aneurysm is the bulge in the wall of a vein. And of course, the reason why people are doing this kind of simulations is that they would like to get more understanding on the, on the health consequences of, of, the, of the blood flow in these, these unwanted aneurysms. But it's not only that. Also, mathematicians have acknowledged that fluid dynamics is, is, is quite important. Uh, so Navier-Stokes equation uh, is stated by the Clay Institute of Mathematics as one of the millennium problems. So Navier-Stokes equation is the equation which governs the flow of fluids such as water or air. And Navier-Stokes equation is, is basically behind in all of these phenomena that we are looking here. It's Navier-Stokes equation, and it's not a model, it's a law of physics, Newton's second law stated for fluids. So it's kind of like a serious uh, first principles model of, of the fluid, fluid mechanics of the real world at the level that takes human to space in the extreme case. And $1 million is promised to the person who solves this by pen and paper. So there I went. I was holding a hat in my hand and, and trying to, to, to convince these people that, okay, it's really important to do fluid dynamics. And, and, and can you guess what they said? They told me that they don't think that fluid dynamics is, is important. They told me that it's not needed in their need, field. It sounds strange and they have their own practices of doing things. So you may not need this method. You can survive without fluid dynamics as well. So at least I learned from these discussions that important and necessary are not equating always with, with one another. 
So what are we doing in my research group? We are studying sprays. Ever since my PhD in 2010, I have been looking at sprays with my team. And sprays, hairspray is a typical example of a spray. You have little droplets that are coming out from the, or uh, formed when you press your finger and spray them, and you get this, this beautiful cloud of droplets uh, flying in the air. And these small droplets that hang in the air are called aerosols. And in my thesis, I was looking at the same application, but in a marine engine context. So I was looking at the fuel injection process, similar process, similar physics, same phenomena, same fluid dynamics, uh, but fuel instead of uh, hairspray. And what kind of problems we are looking nowadays? We have simulated liquid sprays. On the left, you see a picture of the, it's from, a, these are both from publications. So, so uh, the most common biofuel in Finland and how this liquid is coming from the fuel injector and how you break it into smaller droplets as a liquid sheet in this case. Or on the right, you have a picture of a spray flame, a spray flame, and uh, that would be a similar like in a, in a certain engine. engines, you would have that kind of flames. And there's a lot of fluid dynamics in both of these simulations. Navier-Stokes equation is, is behind in both of these. But on the right, you also have chemistry. So you also have chemistry, heat release, chemical species, chemical reactions, and that's interacting with the, with the fluid mechanical environment, the flow which is moving, moving around the flame. And there are even more details. If you look at the injector, the, the metal shiny thing is a fuel injector, you zoom in, you can do even finer scale simulations, depending on like how, how much information and how much computational resources you have. And you can look at the rupture of this liquid column into small, small droplets. And actually, there is very interesting connection between the size of those droplets and the combustion emissions. So you need to understand the small scale phenomena and also the, the larger scale and connection of the, the whole thing is important over here. So emission formation details is a lot about physics and chemistry. Physics, fluid dynamics, and chemistry, chemical reactions. Uh, on the right, you see a picture of a flame, another type of a flame. That could be something that you have in, a, let's say, biogas engine or, 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 or gasoline engine. So you have filled the cylinder with uh, air-fuel mixture. And you have a spark in the middle, and you ignite it. And from that, you have this flame, which is moving towards the wall of this cylinder. You see that it's a turbulent flame. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it has this kind of corrugated edge. And, and then you can, there's a lot of details happening in this system. And what we have noted is that, actually, if you think about it, is that where are the emissions forming? The emissions are not forming anywhere else than actually if you zoom to the green box, that's, that's, where the emis that's, that's where the reactions actually are happening. And so you need to understand what exactly is going on in that green box to really understand how the flame is moving and how the fuel is burning. So here in the middle, you see, see the zoomed simulations. You can do fine scale chemically reactive flow simulations, and you can really look at the flame fronts for different fuels. So on the top, you have a fossilic fuel, a methane. On the bottom, you have hydrogen, a carbon-free fuel. So of course, we are trying to avoid, avoid releasing CO2 and carbon into the air. But what we have noted, and what others have noted as well, is that hydrogen flames, actually these details are very different than fossilic fuels. The flame area is completely different, and actually the, the whole emission formation process is, is different. Also hydrogen has emissions, nitric oxide emissions. So understanding these details can be very relevant. Details can matter. And about details, uh, now 
this takes me to an example that I have been talking about and I will probably be talking about it for the rest of my career because it has in, impacted so, so many things in my career and, 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 and elsewhere as well. So it's about uh, uh, airborne transmission of viruses. So even before the COVID pandemic, we knew very well how particles of different sizes coming from the mouth, we knew how large they are. And aerosol physics knows and characterizes since the past 100 years how these particles of different sizes are behaving in the air. So aerosol stay in the air, they would be below 100 micrometers in size. Droplets are the larger that you see by eye, and those will fall quickly to the ground. So this was all, all known, known before the COVID pandemic. But now when it comes to details, uh, WHO released this, this uh, very, very relevant and interesting detail in, in March 2020. A fact, COVID-19 is not airborne. So this is actually health advice for the whole Earth, like 7 billion or 8 billion people. And what does that mean? So what does that mean? Does it mean that you get it by inhalation or by touching? So this is the big question that has been like revolving around for the whole whole first, second year of, of the pandemic. So around the same time of that tweet, we established this multidisciplinary consortium here in Finland. We started to investigate by supercomputer simulations, fluid dynamic simulations, and also other multidisciplinary co uh, uh, collaborations, uh, how these viruses are traveling in, in the air, like cigarette smoke. And, and the more we looked into the details of these phenomena, we, we were, during the pandemic, we were doing different types of modeling. So we, for example, we, we modeled how the, how the air is flowing in the respiratory tract, how the different particle sizes are moving around there and starting from the vocal folds and, 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 and what's coming out from the mouth in the end. And the more and more we looked into this, the more and more convinced we became that the 100 years old physics is still valid. So we, we, we can say that physics is still valid. It's always valid and it will be valid. And, uh, and, 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 and we understand still some details better. But, uh, but any, anyhow, we became convinced that aerosol transmission could actually not only be an important way of transmission, but actually the main way of disease transmission for many respiratory viruses. So our research got indeed quite broad international attention. Uh, here I find myself on, on CNN explaining a simulation by Finnish Meteorological Institute on how viruses are spreading when a person is coughing in a supermarket. And one of the results, the main result or finding, it's, we were not the only ones, there were others as well. Uh, in June 2020, we published a paper uh, which stated that there's a huge error in aerosol size, a tenfold error uh, in medical literature. So actually, that changes the picture of how many things happen when respiratory viruses are transmitted. It means that you have much more virus in the air, and it has consequences on the using certain kinds of masks and maybe air ventilation and so on, uh, protection guidelines. And this was backed up by several medical authorities later on. Later on, maybe four or five months later, and eventually by WHO in December 2021, they say that actually airborne transmission is the main way of transmission of COVID-19. And this is, if you remember in the beginning, they say that it's a fact, it's not airborne. So things change quite upside down in, in this process. So anyhow, this leads to me to the last slide. Uh, I can fully agree that, that multidisciplinary research is very important. If we put many different uh, small things, details together, something big can emerge out of this. And I think that here in Aalto University, we are in a very good, good track, track in this kind of process. It's been a pleasure to be part of Aalto University community in the, in the past years. Thank you.